Today you're going to take notes on the solar system. Please go ahead and get out your lab notebook. On the next page in your lab notebook, go ahead and write the solar system. And then you're going to go ahead and take notes on this presentation. Please make sure that anytime you see words or definitions in yellow, that you write those into your lab notebook. And right now, if you don't have the sheet, this table, in your lab notebook, please go ahead and copy it down now. What you're going to do is, as you're listening to this presentation, you're going to go ahead and mark whether each of the planets, like Mercury and Venus, are terrestrial or gas giants, approximately how many moons the planets have, whether it has rings, and then what type of atmosphere, if any, it has. Does it have no atmosphere, very shallow atmosphere, or very deep atmosphere? Please make sure as you're listening to this presentation, if you have any questions, please write them in the margin so that we can go over those questions and make sure you understand what we talked about at, by the end of class. Okay, let's begin. Let's start with the sun. The sun is our star. It turns out it's not a very special star. It's just special to us because it's our planet and the planets of our solar system are all in orbit around it. But it is a very, very large ball of extremely hot gases, mostly hydrogen and helium. And they're so hot, they're actually no longer considered in the gas form, but they're considered a plasma. The sun creates its energy, both light and heat, from doing nuclear fusion. And all the objects in our solar system are in orbit around the sun. This slide shows a quick scale model of the solar system. It does a very good job of showing you the scale of the sun compared to the scale of the other planets. You can see how much larger it is. You can see how much larger, for example, the planet Jupiter is than some of the other terrestrial planets like Earth. You can see that the Earth would literally need about a hundred suns to go need about a hundred Earths, excuse me, to go across the surface of the sun. One of the most important definitions you need to write down is terrestrial planet. The terrestrial planets are the planets made mostly of rock and metal. These are also called the inner planets. Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars are all terrestrial planets. The gas giants are planets that have very, very deep atmospheres. They're also called the outer planets. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune are all gas giants. Like the Sun, they're mostly made of hydrogen and helium. We'll talk more about them in a little bit. The dwarf planets. A while ago, Pluto used to be considered a planet, but in 2006, scientists redefined what a planet was. They did this because as scientists found more and more objects out past Pluto in its orbit, they realized they either needed to start to call all of these objects planets or none of them planets. So they changed the definition for a planet. A planet has to be have enough mass that it's round in shape, like Pluto is. It has to orbit the sun, like Pluto does. But it also has to have enough mass that it's pulled all the other objects out of its orbit. So it's in an orbit around the sun without any other objects in its path. And Pluto does not have enough mass to do this, and that's why Pluto is no longer considered a planet, but is now considered a dwarf planet. We'll talk more about Pluto later. Pluto later. Here's a slide that shows you some of the different moons of the planets in the solar system. So it shows you the size of the Earth, shows you the size of the Earth's moon, which is actually unusually large compared to the size of the planet itself. And then it shows you some of the moons of some of the different other planets in our solar system. So you can see some, like Mars, are quite small, and others, like the moons, the Galileo moons of Jupiter, the four that are shown, are really, really quite large. An asteroid, or a meteoroid, is a space rock. So it's going to be something made of rock or metal that's in orbit around the sun. Most of the asteroids are in a region of space between Mars and Jupiter called the asteroid belt. Comets, often called dirty snowballs because comets are basically chunks of ice and dust that orbit around the Sun. As that comet gets closer to the Sun, 
you can imagine it's going to get hotter and so the ice is going to melt and you'll get the characteristic tail of a comet that you often see when comets are in the night sky. As it gets farther away from the sun, that it starts to refreeze more and you don't see much of a tail until eventually the tail has completely disappeared. The Kuiper Belt. The Kuiper Belt is a region of space out past Neptune that has many, many different objects in it. Pluto is a Kuiper Belt object. These objects are believed to be left over from the formation of the solar system. And unlike the asteroid belt, which has objects made of rock and metal, the Kuiper Belt objects are mostly made of frozen water, methane, and ammonia. Now let's start talking about the planets. Mercury is the first planet, and it's the planet that's closest to the sun. It has no moons, and it's the first of the terrestrial planets, meaning it's made mostly of rock and metal. It does not have any atmosphere at all. If you look at this picture of Mercury, it's actually a mosaic. So you can see there's a number of different photographs that an artist basically stitched together so you can see the surface. One of the main features that you can see on the surface of Mercury, like you see on the surface of the Moon, is all of the impact craters, these circular craters around the surface. These are, scientists believe, spots where asteroids smashed into the Mercury at one time, leaving these craters. Because Mercury does not have any atmosphere and does not have any weather, the craters are there until basically another crater hits it and possibly covers that up. And that's why you see so many craters on the surface of Mercury. Scientists actually believe that the same number of objects hit the Earth and the other planets in our solar system, but because many of those have weather and other resurfacing things going on, you don't notice all of the craters. Here's Venus, the second planet from the Sun. It's another terrestrial planet. It does actually have an atmosphere, although you consider it a shallow atmosphere. Venus's atmosphere is shallow but thick enough that you can never actually see the surface of the planet. In order to see the surface of the planet, scientists had to send satellites up and take radar images of the planet so you can see its surface. You can see looking at it, there are some craters on the surface, but not nearly as many as Mercury. This is because there's believed to be a lot of volcanic activity and those volcanoes and lava flows have covered up the surface of Venus. Two interesting facts about Venus. Um, one is that the gases are carbon dioxide and actually sulfuric acid. And those gases have con contributed to what's a, called a runaway greenhouse effect, meaning the surface temperature of Venus is very, very hot. Even though Venus is farther away than Mercury, it actually is the hottest planet in our solar system. And if you were to take a lump of lead metal to the surface of Venus, it would actually melt. The next planet is Earth. Earth is also a terrestrial planet. Unlike Mercury and Venus, it has one moon. The other two planets do not. We can see our moon in this picture right here. This is a photograph taken by the Galileo spacecraft as it left our planet to go to Saturn. They did cut part of the, this photograph to get the moon closer so you could see the scale. As you learned in the tour of the solar system, or as you will learn, it's actually much farther away from this. Earth is called the water planet. It does have an atmosphere, mostly nitrogen and oxygen. Um, the reason it's called the water planet is that it has water on 70% of the surface, but it's important to realize that that water is very, very thin and that most of the planet is still made of rock and metal, which is why it is still considered a terrestrial planet. Mars is the next planet. It is the last of the terrestrial planets. It too has an atmosphere, although it's much thinner than Earth, mostly carbon dioxide. And it has moons as well. It actually has two moons, although they are very, very small. One of the most interesting things about Mars, and the reason it's studied so heavily, is that scientists are interested in learning if there could be or has been life, other life, on Mars. One of the reasons they're so interested is pictures like this sent back from past spacecraft that have visited. This picture, scientists believe, shows the evidence that water may have at one time flowed on the surface of Mars. You can see channels where the water would have gone and flowed around this crater, for example, 
or around this crater right here. Scientists really believe that in order to have life on a planet, you need liquid water. There's more recent evidence for liquid water. Here's two photographs that show a new deposit, possibly from melting ice that might be right underneath the surface. Um, here's some sedimentary rocks that many scientists believe may have been formed when there was actually water on the surface. So scientists are still looking to, to determine that and still looking for possible evidence from of life, although they have not found any yet. Before we get to the next planet, Jupiter, as you mentioned, would be the asteroid belt, but Jupiter would be the next planet in the solar system. Jupiter is the first of the gas giants. So it's made mostly of hydrogen and helium, like the Sun. It has a huge atmosphere, very, very thick atmosphere, although if you, as you look in this picture, they do believe there is a solid core at the center. A couple of Jupiter's most striking features are the stripes of different weather patterns and clouds going across the surface. And probably the most famous feature on Jupiter is the Great Red Spot. The Great Red Spot is a, believed to be a really large hurricane that Galileo actually first saw over 400 years ago and through some of the earliest telescopes created. That hurricane, that Great Red Spot, has been on the planet ever since. Jupiter has at least 63 moons. Some of the most interesting moons are the largest ones called the Galilean moons because Galileo again first observed them. Their scientists are very interested in the moon of Europa because based on photographic evidence they believe it may have ice covered oceans so possibly even liquid water underneath the surface of the ice another good place to look for possible life in our solar system. Io is another very interesting moon, my personal favorite. It's the most volcanically active body in the solar system. This is a picture taken from the Voyager spacecraft as it passed the moon Io. And you can see a volcano erupting, mostly sulfur dioxide, um, on the surface. Here's another picture of two volcanoes, again, erupting on the surface of the moon Io. Saturn is the next of the gas giants, and Saturn has a very well-defined ring system. That's the most obvious feature of the planet. Jupiter, believe it or not, also has a ring system. So please make sure you mark that on your chart. Jupiter does have rings. Scientists actually didn't realize this until the first spacecraft passed it and photographed those pictures of those rings. Getting back to Saturn, Saturn is another gas giant, mostly made of hydrogen and helium. It's the least dense planet in our solar system. If you had an ocean big enough, Saturn would actually float in that ocean. Saturn's less dense than water. Saturn has at least 62 moons in a very deep atmosphere, but also they believe to have a, a solid core somewhere in the center of the planet. The rings of Saturn are made up of millions to billions of particles of dust to rock to possibly even you know, small boulders that are in orbit around the planet. You can see this is what it would look like um, under the natural light out around Saturn, but this is what it would look like when scientists use false color so that they can see the details a little bit better. It's easier to see where the rings break and so forth if you add false color, although it doesn't look like this naturally. They just added that with a computer. Uranus is the next planet, another gas giant, very, very deep atmosphere. It too has rings. It has at least 27 moons. One of the most interesting factors about Uranus is that it, unlike the, almost all the other planets in the solar systems, which rotate basically up and down as they travel around the sun, is rotating with its axis pointing almost directly towards or away from the sun while it goes around it. Scientists believe that early in Uranus's history, an object possibly the size of Mars or even bigger probably ran into it and basically knocked it over so that Uranus is spinning on its side. Neptune is the last of the gas giants. 
Again, mostly made of hydrogen and helium, very dense atmosphere, at least 13 moons. Like Jupiter, it also has a storm that scientists saw when spacecraft traveled by. It's called the Great Dark Spot. They saw this in the late 1970s, um, but they do not know how long it's been there because early telescopes did not, could not even see Jupiter, and it wasn't discovered until much, much later, and the storm wasn't discovered until the 1970s when the spacecraft went past it. As we mentioned earlier, Pluto is no longer considered a planet. It's considered a dwarf planet. This is one of the best photographs taken from the Hubble Space Telescope of Pluto. You can see, and it's important to realize that anytime you see a picture of Pluto that has more detail than this, that it's just an artist that's drawing what they think Pluto would look like. We've never seen Pluto up close, although NASA has sent a spacecraft out there. Um, it was launched several years ago and we'll get there around 2014 so we'll finally get to see Pluto and analyze it in more detail. These objects are called trans-Neptunian objects. Pluto is a trans-Neptunian object, meaning it's farther away or it's outside of the orbit of the planet Neptune. These are all Kuiper Belt objects and these are some of the other dwarf planets that have been discovered. So Iris, Makemake, Orcus, Sedna are other dwarf planets that like Pluto are around, that do orbit our Sun, but do not have enough mass to clear out all the other objects in their path, and so they're not considered planets, but dwarf planets. The history of which planets we know and have discovered has changed over the years. So you shouldn't be too disappointed that Pluto is no longer considered a planet. The original planets discovered by Ptolemy, um, Moon, Mercury, Venus, the Sun, actually was considered another object because remember people used to think that everything revolved around the Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Um, then in the Renaissance people realized that we revolved, revolved around the Sun, so they changed the definition and just made the planets. Then in the early 1800s, they discovered some asteroids. So Ceres, Juno, and Vesta were all considered planets at that point. When they had better telescopes and learned things more, they decided to know that those were not actual planets, but actually asteroids. And so then they finally came all the way through Neptune when they discovered Neptune. Then in the 1930s, they did discover Pluto. But as they started in the late 1900s and early 2000s, discovering more objects in the Kuiper Belt, more trans-Neptunian objects, they decided they really needed to redefine it, and Pluto was no longer considered a planet. That ends our tour of the solar system. If you have any questions, again, please write them down so we can go over them in class. We look forward to seeing your notes and giving you credit for it. Thank you so much for watching.